Hi everyone and welcome back. Let's start our microservice deployment. We already understood okay how to build a microservice, a little tiny, a small microservice. Now we are focused more on the deployment part. And for the deployment uh, in the last videos, what we did, we have already covered these verticals, which is more talking about CI CD, which is only checking okay if it is a TypeScript project or any other project. There are some basic scripts which we need to write and we need to run them in the CI CD continuous integration. Whenever you add a commit and push it to remote, then it always checks the let's say for the JavaScript projects. What we do is JavaScript TypeScript project, we always run npm run test, npm run build, let's say npm pnpm install for the pnpm project. Then pnpm run build, pnpm run test. And then there may be a deployment command that is the part of CD, continuous delivery. So these things we have already done using GitLab and Git, uh, GitLab and GitHub Actions. And I have already discussed like uh, what are these two things, GitLab Actions and GitHub Actions and GitLab CI. These are just like uh, github managed services or gitlab managed services what they do is they are providing you the runner so here they give you a gitlab or github runner let's say it's a gitlab runner what it does is you are providing a configuration file gitlab ci github action file yml file or gitlab ci yml file where you provide instruction okay on push on merge to a particular branch run the ci and that CI has instruction and those instructions are executed on the GitLab runner or GitHub actions. It's nothing but it's a tiny, you can say instance, a Docker container, they spin up, they spin for you and they actually pull the code from your GitHub and based on whatever the instructions you have written, they execute the tasks. If the status code of the task or the script is zero, that means successful one, that means failure, do not run the, the next task. All those things you have to mention in your configuration YML file or GitLab CI YML file. Coming to the deployment part because deployment also happening through the same thing. Here also we are what we are doing is we are spinning up the runner. So let's say if you are doing a deployment through the GitLab. So GitLab runner will be allocated to you. Because this is all GitLab managed. And if you are buying a package then they will give you the GitLab CI minutes. It's a GitLab runner, right? Runner is nothing but an instance, Docker container. It will pull your code and it will see, okay, what you have written for the deployment script. And I will tell you honestly, like in the big projects or big uh, teams, uh, MNCs, they do have already a ops team or operations team or DevOps team for that. You really not worried about how the deployment happens what you do is just write your code write your apis which you got in your uh, ticket api is done just do the push to the dev environment by merging it to the develop branch or master branch for production and then all these uh, configuration for the deployments how the deployment will happen all these managed by a different team but when you when you live in the product world and with the small teams, it's your responsibility also to understand whole, all these mechanisms and sometimes write the configurations. Okay, the deployment. The deployment happens in different, very different ways. It depends on how you are deploying because, because what I'm writing, I'm writing a Node.js process, a Node.js API. So this can be deployed in multiple ways. It can be a serverless or it will, can, it will can be a server based. So I already discussed about these things when it comes to a server based because you already have bought a, a server. Let's say this is the remote server. This can be AWS EC2 instance or a DigitalOcean instance or maybe a your private instance staying on the some remote instance, right? Remote place, a remote maybe on the cloud or your on-premises server. So how you do the deployment? 
you have a Node.js code and let's say this is a nothing but a Ubuntu machine. So if this is a machine, how, how can I run the Node.js instance, Node.js code on this? What you need is you just maybe need a NVM, you need a git on that machine, uh, bash, basic uh, packages and then you can just do simply go to the project, CD project and first of all copy the code because code doesn't exist there. When you do the deploy, we need to take the latest pull from the GitHub repository. So this machine needs to be able to pull the code. So after that, we need to write a script, okay, CD project and then npm, uh, sorry, simply node build index.js that's it this is what your remote instance needs to do now when it runs it exposes let's say 5000 port then it you need to manage okay how you wanted to expose 5000 port to the outside world right then once it is available then what you do is you access the public ip colon 5000 API, V1, Docs, this is how you will access the Swagger and all. This is typically what happens when you have a remote instance you purchased or maybe uh, you have AWS EC2 instance, nothing else, you don't want it to add a load balancer or something. You just wanted to use the public IP of that EC2 instance through which I can reach to that machine on 5000 port. You need to just make the 5000 port public so I can access it. So this is how you will expose the API is when you are deploying it to the uh, EC2 instance, but in the AWS or cloud world, there are many possibilities. You can use an Elastic Beanstalk or you can use lots of other AWS components which can make your deployment far more easy. But this is the, the traditional approach. So we will talk about this through the GitLab. So let's say I'm writing a GitLab script. So first of all, now you might be able to understand how these things really works. This is your remote instance, okay? Staying either on AWS. Oh, let me just move it to back. Let me just create it out. I'll just leave it. So this is your remote EC2 instance. First of all, how your GitLab. GitLab is the runner, right? There is a Docker instance. How that Docker instance should be able to communicate and copy the code. How that happens, that is also interesting topic. And uh, in the current world, how that happens is you actually access to that EC2 instance or any other instance using SSH. What we actually do, let's say I have bought this machine. What I will do SSH minus I. And this is my PAM file and your IP or the the machine right to which you wanted to connect this is how you do SSH and for that what you need to have you need to have public key private key so your GitLab knows your GitLab already has the public key in the in the GitLab environment variables using which it is able to communicate to this remote machine which already has your private key I mean this is how the public key, private key, and this is how the communication happens between two machines. Because you want to communicate, you wanted to copy something. So then there is a, there are some command, SCP command to copy a folder to a particular target directory. I have, let's say the dist folder of the build outcome. So I, I wanted to copy that to the particular directory in the Ubuntu instance, where I will be running the next command is node build index.js, right? Because every time you update the code, you need to again use do the node command or you can use pm2 rebuild, pm2 reload. There are some specific command app name that will take the latest code from the directory and without stopping your uh, node.js instance, you should be able to get your application. So this is how it works. So what we need, we need a GitLab. GitLab needs to know how to copy. GitLab needs to GitLab configuration, GitLab CI.yml. There we will add uh, the script to copy the files to the EC2 instance. Let's do this in a demo. Okay. That's more clear. And this is PNPM. Okay. Again, important aspect of all this is this is 
P and PM repo. That means it's not a single repository with one single service. So we need to target only one particular folder inside a repository which we are deploying to that remote machine. Once we are able to do it, we should be able to write a we should be able to deploy it as a Lambda also. For that, we will be using AWS CDK. So let's see that uh, in the next video. Hi everyone and welcome back. So let's explore uh, the deployment options. So to make it little simpler, uh, I will not be using PNPM repo for the initial demos. Let's say we I have just a simple service here. This is a Node.js service. And we are just exploring the different possible ways of deploying it through the GitLab CI. We are still going to use uh, the GitLab CI. So we will just use the same blocks. <clears throat> now let's say I, I will try to spin up uh, one EC2 instance because here we are not doing everything automatic. We are going to do some manual stuff also. Let's say I'm writing a Node.js service, which is using uh, Postgres. So we are not going to spin up the RDS on the runtime. Here we are going to use AWS RDS or some other resource. Let's say we are using AWS RDS. So we have to get the AWS RDS before while setting up the infra for our application. And we are doing it manually. Similarly, we are doing, going to create AWS EC2 instance. Right, that is also the manual job. Right, now there are a couple of catch here. Here, if we are talking about, okay, deploy the service using RDS and EC2, that's one way. But because here we are talking about deploying a container based or a server based approach where we have a Node.js service. Now Node.js service can be deployed on the container also. So let's say this is a Docker container. Right. So in those sort of approach, because this is a phase two, we will talk about what we will do is from the GitLab CI, we will create a Docker ECR image, Docker build, and we will create a Docker image. And we'll push it to AWS ECR, Elastic Container Registry. So now your container will pull this, the latest change whenever there is a push happens. And then this Docker container will be able to deploy your latest changes. That is like a phase two because here we are not using EC2 instance. We will be using AWS ECS and containerized solutions we will be using. That is a step two. Now there are two approaches in the current system also either from the GitLab CI, you do SCP, like we need to obviously configure a SSH. You need to upload the public key on AWS EC2 instance, and then you should be able to do SSH to the this instance. And then you either you do SCP or you install all the required toolings on this, like Git, uh, Node, and Global Package PM2. And what you will do is you will fetch the latest changes from the master branch like git pull you already know the repo and from this master branch right then what you do is a cd to the directory and then npm run reload app something like this and your application will be available right this is something you can also do or we do scp and then we reload the PM2. So there are two steps. Either you copy the content into the target directory using SCP command or you just trigger so that uh, EC2 instance will pull the latest changes from the GitHub repository and will update and do the PM2 reload. That's another way. That's uh, So these are the two possible options uh, you can use in both the options because the second, first one, git clone is easy. But when we are working on the multiple environment dev, then we have to pull particular repository only, right? Like deploy dev, deploy QA, deploy master, and we have multiple branches. So if it is deploy dev, pull the latest changes from the develop branch, pull the latest changes from the master branch, and then 
copy the change i mean clone the latest changes in the particular directory but it's a git right we don't want it to pull the, those so that's a one approach so we will also do try with scp and we will write some local script in the code some deploy scripts either you can do all these things in the gitlab ci or you can write a simple deployment scripts which are nothing but a bash script which will run on the gitlab and then do the copy so let's get ready first we are going to do with the single repository single service single repository not pnpm and then we will apply the same logic for the pnpm repository okay so what we will do is first we will create a simple uh, express typescript application we are just creating a generator app and then that app we are going to deploy to the ec2 instance it's just like a demo app we are creating so first let's start with a very basic here we it's just a you can say a simple app which is not using any database and all so i will just use a ci cd gitlab ci demo <coughs> I am doing npx. I could have done npm because earlier I installed npm. npx. If you are using npx, you don't need to install any package globally. You can just write npx global package name and the command which you want to do. So this project we are setting up. I think this is the boilerplate. It's a TypeScript uh, setup, and this is done. So here we can check npm run build. It's doing a build and then npm run dev. Okay, the build command is simple build. It is doing a build.ts, ts node build.ts and part build.ts is having. Okay, it is just using executing these command tsc build ts config.json. It, it's like another boilerplate with just custom commands, but you can if you don't like it just play with the simple express typescript app which you already have i just want don't want to write any code so i'm just using this boilerplate code okay now we what we are going to do with this we are going to introduce a gitlab ci that will do the push when we are deploying it to dev or master branch to ec2 instance and it is going to do scp so first we will configure GitLab CI here and then we will configure EC2 instance and rest of the things. So for that, we can just create a simple GitLab CI file. It's .gitlab ci.yml And I'm just copying the latest one, node 16.0.0. And it's a single repository. So these are the basic steps. We have stages test. Later, we, I will also add a, I think there we can have one more stage, which is build. And in the build, that can be the job one. And that will do npm run build so first we are doing npm install that is this is going to run before each and every script like all the stages npm install will execute first npm run build npm run lint that's a lint stage and then test so these are the jobs which are mapped to the stages lint and test both are lint and test both jobs are assigned to the test stage i mean we can uh, give a different names to the stages and the jobs these are jobs and these are the stages all the stages should, should be mapped to one or particular task so after this we can have a deploy job with the stage deploy okay stage is a deploy and here we can say deploy dev and we can have another stage is deploy prod these stages of both the jobs are deploy 
we are going to run different commands npm run deploy dev npm run deploy prod something like this we are going to configure these commands okay and uh, you can also specify like on which branch i think there is a branch uh let me let me recollect i mean we can specify when to execute this particular job on push to the master or, or on push to develop branch so here we can specify only master branch and this would run only when things happens on dev the rest all the other jobs will run always like npm install build lint test and deploy dev and deploy prod now how we want to deploy that's another important thing is we have a gitlab ci setup which is having these tasks now uh, we need some gitlab environment variables also so we need to know which ec2 instance what is the host ip address uh, what is the private key which we are using to communicate to that server there are three important variables we need ec2 host or any host which you are going to deploy on ec2 username either it's a ubuntu or amazon or ec2 private key that we are going to use through the gitlab environment variable because that we need to keep private from the code that we will pick from there at the runtime when the CI runs and we will do the SCP to the target uh, folder. Okay, let's see that. So this is our repository where we are going to uh, do the fun and here I will just rename this GitLab CI demo app. <coughs> Save the changes. Now I need to make a couple of changes before I proceed. CI demo app and here in the settings, the repositories because oh, I don't like this main uh, branch. I wanted to deploy this. I wanted to run this. So there is a protected branch. Okay, here we can also add a protected branch. Let's say develop is already there. I will add this as a protected branch and I will remove the main branch. And I will make the develop as a default branch. So this will take some time. And protect. And in the default branch rule, default branch, I will just make this develop as a default branch. Okay, now I will go to this repository. Here I can see the developer branch and uh, <coughs> we have added a GitLab CI that let me push that GitLab CI here. GitLab CI here. Let's see what I will do now is just get add git commit git add this is the CI file git push origin develop and this is how my origin look like because I have multiple github and gitlab account I need to create alias I mean setting up the git remotes accordingly and it is gitlab personal so i know that where i'm pushing to and i do have gitlab now pushed to yml so you can see this will execute this build lint test for the test stage and i'm doing i pushed on develop branch so it will do de uh, deploy dev and you can see what it is doing in the build it should be able to do because it is first of all getting the node 16.x image this is all the job of gitlab runner they are giving me the container instance of node 16.x and what it will do is it is going to run these commands on that and what this gitlab ci contains in the build stage first npm install and then npm run build then in the lint and test and then deploy dev currently we don't have deploy dev command anywhere 
that is just for demo. So this is a big basic setup. Now in CI CD we need to also expose some variables. Here we can create a protected variables like EC2 instance, EC2 host, EC2 username and a private key. So that GitLab CI will internally use those commands in the GitLab CI script. Here in the CI section either you create uh, how we can do it. Let's say deploy dev. Go to the package JSON. Here I create a deploy dev and here I create a script. Let's say bash deploy.sh right something like this so this is either you create a local script file or put the code inside here that will take care of deploying your application so we can also write a script section here inside this this is the bash script and here we can do ssh and scp command for deploy dev and deploy prod for dev and prod we can have a two different environment variables it can be okay ec2 host dev ec2 username dev ec2 private key dev similarly for the the production ec2 host master ec2 username master ec2 private key master so now uh, next important thing is uh, i just added ecosystem config file which is nothing but uh, which will help our application to reload when we restart so inside package json i added a pm2 process manager and added a deploy command pm2 start or restart ecosystem config and it is going to run a script node i mean it internally runs node onto this file i think we need to specify the node command which is node server.js i will check the execution but node dist server.js because it is generating dist folder when you do the build okay so next thing we are going to do is setting up uh, the AWS EC2 instance and configure these environment variables here private key username and host so now I have logged into AWS console and uh, what I will do is I will create a it's a root account okay so it's better that I should be able to create one sandbox user which I can use for all these operations like creating EC2 instance and all. I will be adding that to the sandbox users. This is a user group and all the users inside the sandbox user group will have an admin access. So I will just add a tag. <coughs> I will just create this user. So here you can enable the console access. Enable console. Custom password which you can type. And we can also create access keys. Uh, we don't need access keys. For now, we just need to use this console sign in link. We already have a password already created for this. And we can also enable MFA, like MFA just to add uh, protection. But I'm going to delete this user once my task is done. So these two things are important. What is the ERN? I think this is what we need. This is the account ERN. And this is the console sign in link. Copy this and try to log in. So we will log out from the root account and we will log in to this administrator known root account. So now I'm able to log in with the administrator account. Here you can see I don't have an access to the, the cost and uses because this access is only allowed to the root at root account. But I can still navigate because I'm a administrator. And here I can start accessing the compute services and I can go to the EC2 instance and I can create a virtual instance on the public VPC subnet because AWS will give you the default VPC already created. Here if I try to see my instances and VPC and all instance running zero, I can create a new instance. What I will do is I will create a Ubuntu instance instead of Amazon AMI 
so here i can just try to create a i like you want to so i will do this and currently we are just accessing the free tier so i will just use a ubuntu server 20 lts okay we'll just use a free tier one instance type t2 micro that's fine key pair this is important because we need to generate a new key pair which will give us the, the pem file i will just use for open ssh create a key pair which is sandbox instance which i will delete later create new key pair which it will download that you will use to access this instance create a security group allow ssh from anywhere so currently we will allow ssh on port 22 from anywhere configuration storage is 8 gb is fine advanced detail we don't need and i will just instance right and here this is the instance type i was looking for the other details which we can just check here <laughs> Okay, let's keep all these things default. We don't want it to spend much time here. And it is creating the instance for us. So this is like uh, the virtual instance we are creating. That will be available in some time. Meanwhile, we can check the details of an instance. This is the VPC and this is created inside a public subnet. This is the private IP. This is the public IP using which we are going to access this instance. And here you can see security group and networking inbound rules. You can communicate, uh, I mean, the source. Source, this means outside world can communicate to this instance. Security group, monitoring, networking, storage. I think 8GB SSD is added to this. Status alarm, we don't have. These are the basic details. It's a Ubuntu instance. And I think the user will be Ubuntu to access this instance. So there are many ways to access this instance. Once this is up and running, so here we can also do the launch instance, right? This is something recently added and that's really nice. Not launch instance, connect. So here this is the public IP address. This is the username. So it's also doing the same thing. Either you can use a instance connect or instance connect endpoint. Or you can also create SSH client. This is how you can do it. We already have a PAM file created. You can do SSH I minus I. This is the command you can run after just giving a proper permissions to this spam file which you have downloaded. Or session manager, SSM using SSM you can also do. EC2 connect or SSH client. I will try to access it using this. And then I will show you the next part. Hi everyone. So we now have an EC2 instance which you can connect uh just by like this or you can just use simple ssh client and i'm able to connect to this instance like this i can exit sorry so we are trying to log in through the pem file because pem file is something which we downloaded and I'm trying to connect to this instance through that. So I'm connected and uh, we can create a particular directory which we wanted to use for the navigation. Let's say I wanted to copy all the code to node API. So I think there is a node API folder, node API folder. Okay. This thing you can do so that when we run the CI CD, now coming back to this point, of this diagram what we are doing from gitlab ci we are doing scp so we will put the private key this pem file as a private key in the gitlab ci which will use it to connect to the ec2 instance and copy all the code to the ec2 instance and then we will run npm run deploy command npm run deploy or npm run reload whatever is a command like if you are using pm2 you can do a reload these commands so for that you need to have a node.js installed on this instance also because what is the runtime environment it's just a ubuntu instance there is nothing installed even git is not there maybe git is there but node is not there so what we can do is we have to
Now, uh, this is a Ubuntu instance, right? What we need to do to enable the Node.js runtime is install Node.js on top of it. So I'm just Googling how, how to install Node.js on uh, Ubuntu. So I can just use this curl command if it is there. And okay, this one is fine. Okay, I need to copy this in the ZSH. We are using bash script for that. So this is the script. Okay, NVM is still not there. Let me install it. So that was for reviewing the script. Now we can just run this also. So now you can see we just added this argument that will uh, install NVM. And uh, we need to reload the bash. Yes, we got the NVM, right? So what we need, uh, what we need to do is NVM install 16.0.0. Okay, and then uh, I will just use NVM use with 16.0.0. There is LTS 20L.x also available right now. Now I can just use npm and node command is available. And how can you make your application running? through the CI CD. Now if we look into our pack, what we are doing. So we have all the things installed here. We just need to do SCP with the private key which we already have configured in the GitLab environment variable. So this is our GitLab environment variable. <coughs> I have added uh, these variables, three variables here. EC2 host, I can show you. This is the host name. This is the private key. Just you can just copy the PAM file here. EC2 username, which is Ubuntu. And then I will just add a couple of commands in my script. This is the deploy dev. Whenever you push to develop, these things will execute. So we need to first install an open SSH client because, <coughs> sorry because this Docker container on which we are running the deploy dev will do SSH to the EC2 instance, which is a virtual bo virtual machine, right? Here we are just getting the private key from the GitLab environment variable, removing all the spaces with the carriage return, adding that private key. So once the in the SSH client, that private key is added, you can just do SSH to the target server. So here we can just do now SSH and SCP. So if you look into this, I will just zoom it a little bit what we are doing here. These are four or five commands, SSH client install, then uh, we are adding and then adding this private key to the SSH agent and then just giving a permission, ch mode to the host and then scp-r means copy all the files recursively from the current working directory to this particular folder. Node API folder I have already created and then SSH to this instance again, go to this directory and npm install if you want to do it, then npm run deploy. And what the deploy command will do from package.json, pm2 start ecosystem config.js. Ecosystem config.js is node dist server.js. Node dist server.js. Okay. Okay. What we need to do now is, okay, deploy. Let me just run the CI. Okay, um, 
pushing to the develop branch so it will run the CI git push origin develop and then we will go to the browser and see the trigger make sure develop is a protected branch then only it should be able to access the environment variables which we have set in the GitLab CI and uh, we have written these commands specific commands to do SSH and running this particular script onto the instance and this is our instance so it has a node already working there is NVM we can do NVM list I think we have this particular version available and node minus V and we are trying to copy all the code to uh, this particular folder so I have created this folder already node API it should be able to copy that uh, content to there so let's see our uh, deploy dev job okay so we are running this uh, on GitLab CI and I'm seeing this error so if you able to see this error everything runs properly we are able to add it to SSH agent and private key we are able to do SSH SCP also I think has happened we can just look into this directory <coughs> CD node API and I can see the whole code uh, that's awesome right we are able to copy the whole code now the issue is it is not able to find npm but I can run the npm command on server because what it is doing is it is first copying then it is trying to SSH to the same server and doing uh, this command running this command node API and doing npm install and npm run deploy it's saying that npm command not found so we need to see why the npm command is not there so to fix this issue I did a little bit of hack what I'm doing is because this is a GitLab runner GitLab runner is running this command on EC2 instance so what I'm doing is I'm explicitly exposing this path which contains the node version so when you export this path then when uh, this script try to identify where the npm is npm is installed in this path which I have added in the exports so whenever you try to identify node or npm it will get it so this is the fix I have applied and uh, now I did also run this CI so pm2 successfully demonized and what it is doing so let me see pm2 start app.js let me see the pm2 because we are on the same instance I can access that instance and I can install the PM2 globally because so that I can see the instances in our npm install minus the PM2 <coughs> PM2 list okay PM2 update I can do no process found that's fine so if I try to run this command manually in the folder node API so there is already a package JSON we have so there I can do npm run deploy what it does let's see npm run deploy memory pm2 is out of date do pm2 update something is not right with the ecosystem config either I'm doing something wrong because how can I start the application simply do using node dist do we have that folder okay because that folder is not there we need to do npm run build because I removed that command from here so what the build command is doing build command is generating the dist so you don't need to command fail can't find module libtc.js oh, that's strange 
so i'm currently playing with the instance itself just trying to identify what has what is wrong here build.ts I have, ts node is also available. This is strange. Can't find module yeah. tsc.js. Okay, so the issue was because earlier I did manually install npm install. I did uh, remove the package log json, remove the node modules and then I am able to start the application now because now this is the fresh installation i'm able to run my server on particular port now another important thing is let's say i'm able to run the process successfully here first of all i need to fix this pm2 this is running on 3000 right let's see what happens when i do npm run deploy it is still api server not running starting script not found dist server.js okay i will do npm run build it should be able to give me the dist folder and then i will be able to run that command so these are the basic commands which you need to execute before you do the deploy now i have this uh, dist server.js okay script not found why that is are we not running the server.js? I'm not sure which is the main file. Let me check here in the code base. Ecosystem config and here in the package JSON, what we are running? Nodemon, nodemon.json. Spec nodemon.json. This is for test cases. Let's skip this. When you do npm run dev, node moon, and it should be looking for build.ts, that is for build, dist server.js. I think this is starting the server. Or uh, index.js is starting the server. Okay, this is starting the server. So let's go to our terminal again. And I will update the ecosystem config file. First of all, let me just run this manually. Okay. Can't find module, so let's run it through the proper channel. That's a little strange with the TypeScript project. So we have dist and build.ts. Either I can just run the simple TypeScript or we can just go to the dist. So I will just do the ecosystem config. And here instead of server.js, it's index.js. Okay, so I need to do a little bit of debugging. I mean, this project is not uh, that simple. It's a JavaScript TypeScript and on top of that, we are using these alias. If you can see this uh, in our code everywhere, we are using these alias. And while running this application, because I just created it using uh, some existing module, generator app, you can see we are using this module alias. That's why it's not easy to just run a node index.ts. Either we require this module on top of index.ts, then it will work. So what we will, what we have to do is just use this command in your PM2 ecosystem config. I try to reproduce this issue here. Now this will work for this current project because whatever happens. And we also don't have right now this node ENV and a port. We can configure these port at our own uh, preference like 3000 port, 5000 port. And I'm able to deploy this like this PM to reload. Somehow this start or restart command is throwing error. So I'm trying to just reproduce this locally here. 
PM2 list. So currently there are two PM2. I will just delete both of the process 0 and uh, 1 and 0. And uh, I will just go to the directory. No DPI. And more ecosystem config. And here you can see I just replaced this with this because we need a module alias because we are using aliasing and inside this it should be able to run index.js so I will just do npm run deploy is still creating some error so I can just simply try to run npm run deploy uh, the command is we can just simply do is pm to start ecosystem config.js and let me check if the logs are good I don't know there is why this is saying this process is already occupied maybe I need to specify the port plus of minus i 8081 let me kill this port because we are trying to run two instance and maybe it is trying to create using same port and this should be fine i'll just save it pm to reload <coughs> because one is online another is off that means it was not working earlier <coughs> PM to list, PM to logs. So we can just try to see curl localhost 8081. And you can see we are able to access right this port because this response is coming from the API. Now either we can expose this host and port also. So let's do that in the part two. Maybe I will also do some cleanup in the GitLab CI. But this is the part one where we are able to copy the code to the remote server, able to run the command. Now I just need to clean up this particular script so that we can have everything. npm run build, npm install and here I will just replace this and see you in the next video. Thanks everyone.